What's up, Crypto Muscle? Coming to you another YouTube video. Here we are, internationally renowned, worldwide. Thing is, we're that Crypto Muscle and the Crypto Muscle Network. Coming to you another video. All right, Rect Collaboration Sundays. All right, I just love doing these segments. All right, on Sundays, just totally destroying the the dust of legacy. The, the once former wannabe and wannabe everything in life Tiwi right and you can interchange uh, all these different names in it all these wannabes in life right bits away wannabe in life the one wannabe in life whale miner you name them all there's a wannabe in life alright and they can't make it in crypto that's why they're not in crypto no more and it sucks for them. <laughs> but so, you know, dumbasses like Tiwi, all right, terrible projects, wrecked all the time, um, <laughs> terrible picks as well when it comes to crypto uh, coins and tokens and all that shit. And what does it amount to for you guys, right? Because these idiots were supposedly people that you know know a thing or two, supposedly, and that's why they're trying to showcase their their stuff. But yet, they didn't know jack shit about nothing in the end when you really look at it. And I still like the story of the good old Tiwi, who just stole from everybody in his own project, right? And just so he could pay back his debt because he did all this shit, bought a new car, did home improvement, and nothing to show for it, right? Like, how are you paying for that shit? <laughs> because obviously he wasn't making money in crypto, and he only could make so much at his job, right? Working some sort of packaging company, and, you know, really can't go nowhere with the job because he openly spoke about it, alright, I'm not making shit up, but he openly spoke about having a felony on his record, so, during this is during the time of COVID, he said he had a felony on his record, and he was lucky and fortunate to have the job that he has, that he was lucky to have that job, because, you know, when it comes to f having a felony on your record, it's very tough to get a job, alright, let alone a, a good paying job. But, whatever the case may be, he had a decent job, I guess, working at this sort of packaging company. And he spoke about how it was deemed as a essential business, meaning that it wasn't one of those jobs that, uh, they, didn't, that they didn't feel it was unnecessary that, okay, you could just stay home during the COVID crisis. All right. Um... You know, like me, all I got to say is that um, what I do is essential, all right, an essential job, and that's why I worked, but I've been always been gainfully employed, all right, but, you know, when it comes to uh, your your old boy Tiwi there, it, it was just something that, it was just a piece of shit, you know what I mean, like, Terrible to everything and want to be in life. That's the bottom line, right? Then he brought to this piece of shit project, uh, supposedly to make gains for everybody. And there was always this thing that he wanted to be able to produce a platform of his own. And you know what? And it's hard work to run a platform. I can imagine the amount of work you got to put into it and money. It's not, you know. It's not like you just get it for free, right? You got to build it. So I think he openly talked about how he had a partner that he worked with and, um, you know, developed the smart contract aspect of it. And that was like his partner. But I don't know. I think he only paid him just for developmental stuff. And then after that was said and done, he took over and ran everything else. In terms of uh, 
running the smart contract, the site, all that stuff. All right, he only paid the developer to develop this deal. Because, you know, one thing about Tiwi is that he's not smart enough to to make contracts either. You know, that's just not his, that's not his uh, juice, all right, because uh, he's garbage. Not very smart. That's why he worked in a packaging company, all right. But, yeah, so, uh, you know, this cautionary tale I'm trying to show you guys is that... Um, He's the one that said, hey, check out Drip, guys. So his dumbass bought Drip when it was like 150 bucks, Like a moron. Alright. Like you buy you buy Drip at 150 bucks. You buy Animal Farm at 300 Get out of here, man. It's very garbage. Alright, so let's take a look at Drip. Uh, in the past day... Total 24 hour volume. Look at that. $51. That is crazy. And when you see flat lines like this, it's dead. This is dead like this, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, $51 in volume, man. That's that's just terrible. The price has gone down in the past week 7.8%. So it's below half a penny now. And. I wonder if it's going to go, you know, well below half a penny, right? I mean, it will. I mean, it's obvious. There, This thing will never be a dollar again, right? That's crazy, man. Never be a dollar again. And I always like to look at Let's see, when was the last time it was a dollar? I think it was earlier this year, right? No, oh, never mind. <laughs> I think a dollar was like a year ago. A penny is what it was I was referring to. A penny was it, uh, April was when the last time it was a penny. Three, uh, Four months ago. You can see there, April, the last day was April 4th. And then April 5th. Uh, Oh, actually, April 5th. Okay, my bad. There we go. So, April 8th was the last time it was a penny. And then it flatlined to where it's at now. Uh, last time it was a dollar. Shit, that was like, I think it was like a year ago. Oh, never mind. It wasn't a year ago. It was... Last time it was a dollar. It was like... A year and a half ago. <laughs> Damn. It's crazy. You guys believe it's going to bounce back? Really? Uh, let's see. Animal Farm Pigs. It's near, near dead. <laughs> when you have these flat lines like this. Uh, down 5.2 for the day. Whoo. Man. 12% in the past week. That's big. Um, it's like a dog's. one98 for the day. Not bad. It's decent. And down 5.9% in the week. This thing's going to be the next drip right here, as in it's going to be competing with who's going to be the better piece of shit coin. Is a drip or animal farm dogs, right? So, look at, look at, so going back to pigs, think about this for a minute. Alright. Pigs, T we bought at 300 something dollars. What kind of shit is that? <laughs> 300 something dollars, man. Shit. Unbelievable. I, I remember when at my old job, uh, I would visit this Korean guy's uh, store, the owner, very, you know, he's a Korean dude. And 
he he uh well my former career I used to work for a Budweiser job uh and then <laughs> so I would go visit this business you know this Korean guy's business once a week and it's an older Korean dude and prices are high to him on everything that's just to him so every time you know I tell him something his reaction is always unbelievable 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 <laughs> you know he's always ranting of unbelievable yeah exactly unbelievable all right drip down uh, 99.98% from all time high. Unbelievable. Man, shit. So Drip was desperate, right? They said, oh, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. Oh, Drip X is going to save us. Swap X is going to save us. And it hasn't. Uh, they even said, oh, Pulse Chain. We're going to go on Pulse Chain. They're going to they're gonna be big for Drip. Right? So they're, they're just doing everything they can to... Um, you know, just sit there and be like, you know, whatever they could try to get that would save them, right? Whatever attention-grabbing headline with, with nothing to back it up can save them, right? That's what they're trying to do. So, they said, oh, Pulse Chain, we're going to go on Pulse Chain, right? And so, uh, let's take a look here. We'll look at Hex. Says, Hex is what got you to Pulse Chain, right? You had to do a lot of waiting, but it got you to Pulse Chain. So the market has decided Hex on Pulse Chain is the official Hex. Migration from Ethereum to Pulse Chain has saved millions of dollars in fees. Get out of here, man. No one cares. All right? No one cares. Because if anybody cares, it wouldn't be well below the penny that it is, all right? And it would be closer to the 57 cent all-time highs. But no, it's closer to a penny, less than a penny, than anything. You see in the past week down, damn, down 13%. Yeah, so let's see here. If RH doesn't do a token burn on Hex and PLS, it's a scam. Demand a token burn from Richard Hart. Or else what? Right? Yeah, whatever. Guess what I started accumulation Hex. Let's go, babe, first. Bag it's full. What are you talking about? All you see is all this red falling. Yeah, you want to bag it up. Go ahead, bag it up. All right, so uh, let's see. Pulse chain. Down 3.49 for the day. Uh, past week. It's down 10% as well. Man, these are some disappointing numbers here. Goal pulse now at 450 days, 0.41x sacrifice, PLS X, that's the second sacrifice. It's a uh, 0.22x sacrifice. Garbage. Hmm. I'm just kind of taking it back and just analyzing how how can it be all these zeros in front of a number right <laughs> man it's so bad so bad you could burn and burn and burn and we'll do jack shit to the price it's just so bad you know, it just sucks that this is something that's supposed to be the best thing ever and all that stuff. And, oh my gosh, you know, it's we're, we're supposed to be well beyond Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain, but yet it's not really. 
It's only 17% faster. Come on. 17% better than Ethereum. I don't see anybody flocking from Ethereum. Everybody's still doing developments on Ethereum. So, um, and shit, even Tron Network doing more developments. Right? And, and still developing off of Binance Smart Chain. But no, still makes you wonder why all the, the testing, all the stuff that they were doing and trying to develop it on the Binance Smart Chain or off fork of it, that is. Why did they stop and let and failed, you know? And all the numerous tests that they did over and over and over again. And why did it fail? Whereas all of a sudden they ran it off Ethereum forking it. And, you know, the next thing you know, it's launched. Like, what is it in the code? What is it in something to see deep down why that became more of a thing than uh, forking it off the Binance smart chain, you know? I mean, there's plenty of projects that have forked and utilized the Binance Smart Chain. Um, I don't know. It just it just makes you wonder, right? That's the in-depth stuff that we don't see is the the development and programming and, and all that creative side of stuff. Hey, we just don't really see, so we don't know, you know what transpired. But it was very quick with Ethereum... It was almost like uh, they already had it there and it was almost like they had enough and I'm, when I'm referring to Dave, Richard Hart you know they had enough of just hearing people complaining and whining about when's it going to launch when's it going to launch that he stalled long enough and said alright I'm done I'm just going to launch it right I mean how else can you explain that as much of a hype and weight and all that stuff that you had to go through and, you know, you expect something more out of it, but yet it just kind of, that's it? That's all you got out of it, you know? Like all the air was let out of the tire, everything about it just like, oh, you be do yip yay wow you know like it wasn't all that exciting you know it was such a disappointment and it shows because if it wasn't such a disappointment then we would see higher value higher prices but there were so many opportunities that could have re- you know made it a redeeming quality right I think about it all the hype, the sacrifices didn't happen. Then you meet your future self and you have the opportunity to be like, all right, here we go. Um, we're going to launch this thing at PulseCon. I mean, imagine of all venues, of everything that you've done in terms of just things in general, countless of locales, uh, the sacrifices, just the things that you've done for this opportunity to launch, right? Pulse Chain. I mean, the most fitting thing you could have ever done was to launch it on PulseCon, right? Because you had this conference of events and it in regards to this itself, Pulse Chain, and all the development talk that was about being about it. Right? And think about that. What if you launched it, stepped on stage and said, here we are. Or how about this? Since you did it on a televised appearance, since you couldn't show up in person, even that televised appearance, you'd be like, hey, I got something for you guys, right? And then someone physically at PulseCon would unveil it as a surprise. You know, set up from Richard Hart. But no, he flopped. Just like this project is a flop. And so that's why it stands today as such a disappointment. And also because it's off the Ethereum network 
forked off of that, which again is a disappointment. You know, because the whole idea, and I'll stick to this forever. <laughs> all right, that the whole idea was to get away from Ethereum network because of the high gas fees, right? Not fork from it. High gas fees, uh, I guess you could say bogged down from usage. And Binance Smart Chain has proven to be faster, to be efficient, to be cheaper in terms of everything, right? Gas fees, everything. But yet, still went ahead and went backwards and forked off of ETH. So, so, makes you wonder. What if, right? What if? Woulda, coulda, shoulda. All that stuff. But yeah, so, I went about a different approach this Sunday about how, you know, I guess I'm talking about on a different side of things. How this thing is just such a disappointment, you know? Drip's dying. It's been dead, actually, but you know, the, the chat's been super quiet. Yeah, you get some random questions here and there. And you'll get some random guys be like trying to do what they can to pump the bags. But no one cares. All right. Matter of time. That's what really matters. It can be a matter of time. That we got this baby. Crushed, that is. <laughs> this thing's over. 2024. Will we finally bury this shit in 2024? Can't wait to just bury it all. Alright. I mean, obviously, Forex buried it. He's, I'm out of here. Tiwi left. Richard Hart's pretty much AWOL or MIA, whatever. So, it's fitting, right, that all these fools disappeared gone and then explains why these projects are dead it's not rocket science but I think you guys need that to know that fundamentally that it's over sad so uh, other than that that's the latest on everything so comment down below let me know what you think about these failures. I always enjoy smashing on these platforms and tokens and stuff. Cause long been dead. That's the whole. That's the point of it. It's long been dead. No one cares. And we'll find out by the end of the year when it's gone. Oh, by the way, before we go, let's take a look at. Animal Farm, and let's take a look at what we have here. Oh, man. Lost a million. Think about that. It was at 10.2 million. Now it's at 9.2 million. So it lost a million since a week ago. Wow. And this is BUSD, so it's not... You can't say, oh, because it was volatile, you know, the volatility. No. The stable dollars, BUSD value. I think BUSD might be gone, though, but you get what I'm saying? Like, it's probably USDT, you know, stable dollars. But, yeah, I mean, that's crazy when you think about it. All right, so... Um, Man, a million dollars gone in a week. Go look at my video last week. It was at 10.2 million. Yeah, you know this shit's coming in. Anyhow, that's enough of that. For this week, at least. We'll smash them all again next week. All right, for on another riveting episode of the Crypto Muscle Smashes on this wrecked collaboration bullshit. Other than that, I'll see you next one.